Thank you for the invitation and the organization of the Congress. I'm going to speak in English, not very well. I originally speak Spanish, but I will try to make me understand my bad English. Uh, my work presentation try to understand one general condition we have in South America in the last 10 years now is changing with similar kind of governance in each country of South America. We can find Chavez, Evo Morales, Lula, Correa, Kirchner. They have quite different, but they have just common trend with changes with presenting themselves as an alternative to neoliberalism. Someone talks about socialism, other ones talk about the buen vivir, other ones talk about a national populist uh, government. Uh, but in, in deep, they have a common trend, and this common trend arises in some specific moment and finish in the same moment. So we have some common thing we have to understand. And it's very related with what we were talking here, because which is in common is the boom cycle of commodities. This expansion of the China demand of the commodities, oil in Venezuela, and soybean, for example, in Argentina, meaning in Brazil, etc., puts us in front of what is happening with this relation. And it seems to be, as Guillermina points yesterday, some contradiction between an expansion of popular rights, popular governments, and at the same time, conflicts arising in the local place where commodities are produced. And this common cycle we can understand better when we think that the particular place of South America in the worldwide economy, in the division of labor, worldwide has changed a lot. We, have, we found the rise of East, East Asia, China with lower wage, expanding commodities of exports from industrial uh, goods, industrial commodities, but South America remain on, hasn't changed in his history place of producing uh, primary goods. When we see, for example, the percent of exports of each country, we can find there that 60% and more is of exports are primary goods, primary commodities. So there was not a change in the last in the history of South America. We had big changes worldwide with the globalization, but South America remained in the same place. And this place can explain us, I, I think, the particular cycles we found in this contradiction between popular governments and conflicts and attacks in the local places of production. And one thing I think I, is important to understand this, and maybe we can, after debate in the, in the questions time, is maybe when we think in extraction, uh, I understand the word and the importance of the word of extraction, but it can see, be seen just in a linear way. Just as, okay, imperialist comes, take primary goods and take away from South America, and it's just pillage, just something that go away, and continually we have a drain from South America to the rest of the world. That we are 
nice explanation, imperialism is bad, local governments fight against imperialism, and we have a contradiction, but it's not so simple. What we found in South America, and we have to understand it's important, that producing primary commodities related to natural resources has a particularity. In general production, we have a industrial production puts the competition between companies to produce. In general, we have exceptions, makes a competition. If you have higher productivity, because you have good technologies, you have development of technology, you get, you get extra profits, but competitions makes equalize the profit rate. In the long term, it makes, it's not simple, but in general, we found that competition in industry, in normal industry, manufacturing industry, makes equalize the profit rate. When you go to the place of production of primary goods, the difference of productivity is not from technology, it's from the quality of the land. And we're going to say it's also social conditions that can particularly make extra profits. But we have that certain place of the world, the, the labor productivity is higher, and that gives extra profits in this sector. And these extra profits, by competition, doesn't remain in the companies, goes to the landowner. They have to pay different royalties, they have to pay the price of the land, they have to access the land, they need to, com they, they compete between the companies and this goes to, to the landowner. The landowner, we are talking in South America, we have in min mining uh, oil, the landowner is the state, in agriculture is private, but it's mainly national, it's not foreign uh, ownership, it's more national ownership in the, in the agriculture. This owner receives money, but in capital you receive money if you produce something, and land is not produced. Land is not the result of production of labor. It's, you have property, but you have something at price, but not value in terms of the relation of producing the wealth. In capital, the wealth is produced by the relation with labor. Land has not value, but the owner of the land can get a price of this land. And why this is important? Because as classical political economy has said, Ricardo is not something new, the landowner is a parasite for the capital, because he gets money for nothing. So capital wants to recover what he loses in the hands of landowner. But this recovery doesn't go just straight outside the country, but it remains in a logic, internal logic, internal system that is appropriated this ground rent by the state and distributed in all the country. So the expansion in one sector of primary goods and with a higher price, it, the frontier expands and makes local conflicts in this expansion, gets some revenues for the state and the state can make in this boom cycles of commodities some policies that make themselves popular. They raise wages, they raise social benefits, expansion of, social, of education, and they change what it was the austerity and the neoliberal policies of the 90s when the price were lower. But the condition to make these popular policies is to attack local population because they have to expand the frontier to expand the ground rent. So I think this contradiction is important because, and we are thinking here a lot of local fights, that local fights had not only against the state, the policy, and one simple logic of capital accumulation, but also workers that benefit from this. So that makes some contradictions. It's not that just one way attack where extract and okay is clear of who is the enemy, but it makes an a complex system where attacking one sector has support of the rest of the workers. And not just the ruling class is attacking, but also you have conflicts inside the workers. Just for show, this is, well, this is a, a bit complex maybe, but this is compared the profits in agriculture uh, and oil agriculture in Brazil and Argentina and oil in Venezuela, just for example, compare the profit rate with the profit rate of manufacturing in the US. 
What we found is one, the line in black, is the level of profits in the states. And the other colors show the profit, the rate of profit in, in, in the production of primary goods in these countries. What we found is 30 on, or 10 or 4 more rate of profit than in the states we found in these places. So there is a lot of extra profit to be appropriated by different subjects. This, for example, puts a question in one tradition which is related with the, the idea of extractionism, that is the unequal exchange. Maybe you have heard, you usually think that there is an unequal exchange between South America or the periphery and the center. But what we found is there is a profit going to these countries, not just going away, but coming to these countries. And this is important because if, if you only see one way, we cannot understand the other complex complexity of all the policies and what is going in these countries. So in this contradiction, we have to think what happened with this ground rent, which is appropriated by the state, but it doesn't remain in the state. And the state is not just the representative of people, the state is part of capital. It is capital, and it reproduces capital. And what capital it reproduces? Well, it reproduces local companies and foreign companies trying to recover this ground rent they lost. So we have multinationals, we have foreign companies that get uh, auto, uh, automobiles, uh, steel industry, all the development industry, and that gets a complexity of unions, of working class related with these companies. But in general, what we found in South America that the productivity of these companies is very low. The exports are primary goods. Manufacturing companies does not export. They get subsidized, they get protection to survive the, the worldwide competition because they have very low productivity. So the working class they produce, or the, the conditions of living of the working class, are worse and worse. During the boom cycles, this appeared like, OK, it's a good moment. We can get better conditions. But the general trend is that the, low, the lower uh, wages and the workfare, the, the work force is reproducing below its value. And this is important because in the good cycles, the attack of the conditions of local place attack living conditions, and the workers who benefit in some way of the social policies split these kind of conflicts. But in the long run, the same conditions that receive the local workers and the local habitants is the same conditions that in the rest of the country. So one moment can make a split, but if we have a long view, we see that it's the same trend goes in the both places. And it's important this because one of the main things I, I, I think is strategy politically when we are looking for uh, local fights is to think the unity in national or international context. So we, have to, we need to understand these splits between uh, sectors and social subjects. And this surplus population, I think it's important also to understand that it's also uh, a source of uh, differential ground rent, of this extra profit. Why? Because co as working class is reproducing below its, its, its value, technologies that are uh, contaminant, that are worse, uh, technologies that maybe that is used in Europe or other countries, can be used in South America. Why? Because as population doesn't need to be reproduced in normal conditions because they don't need this population. Capital is not looking to expand the working class, expand the, the, the works to be exploited. They're just expelling it. It's surplus population for capital. They allow them to introduce technologies that can be more profitable by using maybe technologies that are banned in other continents. So for finish, what I try to show is extractivism is, I think, is just one way look of the problem. We have to make a more complex analysis of how the ground rent implies a relation between the local conflicts, local expansion of production, and the general state policies and the general relation. And it's important because we need to have a general strategy if we want to win. If we, we just want to have some testimonies of good fights, 
we can remain in analysis is one way. But if we want to win, we need a more general view. And this general view, I think, introducing the problem of ground rent, in particular for South America, but maybe in other local conflicts, which is also the problem, may give you an answer of what is happening in general to this kind of conflict. Thank you.